In this question, we are asked to find the current density of this stream of protons. We know the current density is symbolized by J, and it equals N, the number of charge carriers per meter cubed, times E, which is the elementary charge, times the drift speed of the protons. Now, the question gives us the drift speed, although it gives it to us in kilometers per second, so we're going to have to convert that into meters per second. And then it also gives us the value of N, which again was the number of charge carriers per meter cubed. However, they have given us that value in terms of centimeters cubed, so that needs to be converted into meters cubed. And so those are the conversions we're going to have to make. E is the elementary charge, and that is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So we'll go ahead and set up the calculation for current density, which again is J, and this will equal the value of N, 8.7. Now they wrote it as centimeters to the negative three. You might remember from a math class that centimeters to the negative three can actually be written as centimeters to the positive three as long as you put it in the denominator. So we choose to do it in that manner. Again, we need to convert this into meters cubed. So we're going to set up a little conversion factor here. We all perhaps know that one centimeter is equivalent to 10 to the negative two meters. But in order for the centimeters cubed to cancel with centimeters cubed, we're going to actually have to cube this conversion factor. That way the centimeters cubed will cancel nicely with centimeters cubed and we will be left with meters cubed. So don't forget to cube that conversion factor. So that's the value of lowercase n. We're gonna multiply that by e, which as stated is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs and then times the drift speed. Now that's 470 kilometers per second. We're gonna to need to convert that as well. So here's 470 kilometers per second. We'll multiply this by a simple conversion factor. We all know that one kilometer is 10 to the power of three meters. So when we set up our conversion factor in that manner, the kilometers will cancel out. Again, these centimeters cubed will cancel out. Pick up your calculator and punch this in one more time. Don't forget to cube the one over 10 to the negative two. And when you punch this into your calculator very carefully, you should get a value for the current density of about 6.54 times 10 to the minus 7. And then we will see what units we are left with here. So we have a coulombs per second right there. We may know that coulombs per second is amps. And then we also have a meters up here. And then don't forget, this is a meters cubed. So essentially you have meters over meters cubed and one factor of meters would cancel. So that would go to one, and this would go down to meters squared. So you're left in the denominator with a meters squared unit. And so the final answer would be in terms of amps per meter squared. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. We go up to part B, and it tells us, or it asks us, what is the total current that Earth would receive? Now, that's a, kind of an interesting question we can perhaps sketch a little picture of Earth. And we know that the Earth is receiving this number of amps per meter squared. We can imagine perhaps that the stream of protons is coming straight down on top of the Earth. And hopefully we would see, if we were imagining that we were looking down on the Earth, we would see actually a circular cross section is what our eyes would see, what the protons would see if they had eyes as they stream downwards towards Earth. So looking down from this perspective, we wouldn't actually see a sphere, we would see a circular cross-section of the Earth. And of course we know that the area of such a circular cross-section would be pi multiplied by the radius of Earth squared. So putting that idea together along with the current density is going to allow us to find the current because we know that current is equal to current density multiplied by an area, essentially. And that should make sense because current density is amps per meter squared, and then area is in meters squared. So if you multiply amps per meter squared times meter squared, you're just going to be left with amps, the unit of current. So we'll go ahead and we'll put in our current that we found in part A, 6.54 times 10 to the minus 7 amps per meter squared multiplied by, again, the area that the protons would be impacting here, and that's the circular cross-sectional area of Earth. It's gonna be pi times the radius of Earth. Let's go ahead and look that value up. And that happens to be about 
times 10 to the power of sixth meters, but then don't forget that we actually have to square the radius. Don't square pi, just square the radius because the formula is pi r squared, of course. So we'll multiply this out. And when we do so, we will get a total current. It's actually a fairly large value, so we're gonna convert this into scientific notation of 8.34 times 10 to the power of seven. And then dimensionally, again, the meter squareds will cancel. That will leave you with just amps, the unit of current. So this would be the correct answer for part B.